Hello again, friends, and welcome to another exciting segment of Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review. So you're wondering, as you look at the table, what is going on here tonight? Well, let me tell you. Tonight's version is going to be Doc G's Home Shopping Network version of Wine and Spirits Review. So tonight, my main goal is to share with you an array of things that you can use as possibilities for buying gifts for your wine drinking friends, or more importantly, just for you. So I have on the table a number of things that I want to suggest to you as possibilities for uh, holiday and Christmas gifts, however you choose to celebrate, uh, that you can give to your friends and family and hopefully to yourself as well. So let me jump right in with, um, I'm going to kind of like go back and forth here with a lot of the different things that you see on the table and do a little bit of mix and match. So let's start out with, because um, I got to get something in my glass. So let me start by um, getting a bottle of wine ready with this little device called the Coravin Wine Thief. I may have shared this uh, with you before, I don't know, but it is a device that has, if you look at it, has a little hypodermic black needle on there, which is very sharp, so you need to be very careful. You just set it on top of the bottle, that grips it, that goes right through the cork without having to open the whole bottle of wine. Thus, this is why it's called a wine thief. It allows you to preserve your wines because in this sleeve here is a small capsule that is filled with Argon 65, which is an inert gas that is uh, odorless and flavorless and serves as an oxygen barrier so as not to let your wine spoil. So in order to get wine out of here, let me move this out of the way. In order to get wine out of here, you have to press on this little button. You hear the air coming out? Well, that's Argon. And it displaces the oxygen, a little bit of oxygen that's in the bottle. That's why it takes a little bit of, you gotta pour it. And you can hear that trickling into the glass. Now that might sound like too much trouble for you, but if you're not a big wine drinker and you want to preserve your wines, because this will allow your wines to keep for about three to six weeks, maybe even two months. So I'm going to talk about this wine a little bit later. Hmm. Came right out of the bottle perfectly. So, and then when you're done with it, what you do is you simply pull up. The needle comes right out. Be very careful. It's very sharp. It actually has a little rubber guard that you put on it, which I'll put on later. You put it back down and you set it aside. Now, this little device, even though it could be a Christmas gift, is really intended for the serious wine drinker because it's not a $10 gift. You can look it up and look for different prices, but it's going to go in the 200 plus range. Uh, when I bought it, I'm assuming it's still somewhere around there. And then you have to buy replacement Argon capsules, which you can find on Amazon and through the Coravin website as well. So the Coravin Wine Thief is our first toy for the evening to get us started. So um, there are a number of other gifts that I think would be um, appropriate for you that aren't wine, and I'll get to that at the end, of course, that are appropriate for you to uh, use for the holiday. So if you are not interested in <laughs> just taking a couple sips out of your bottle, you can use a corkscrew uh, to get your wine out of the bottle completely. So I like the feature for you as we move along here. An electronic corkscrew, well not electronic, it's, it's battery powered, and a manual corkscrew. I'm going to open two bottles of wine to show you the difference. Now this first one is made by Cuisinart, and this one I've had for a couple years now. goes on a little base that recharges it on a daily basis as long as it's back in the base. It has a battery in it, and it, it basically will run forever. It comes with this little foil remover, and you, take, you should remove the foil. It helps the, the cork come out a little bit easier. This is the same bottle of wine that I just 
use the Corvin for. Pop that off. Notice now the cork is clear. You take your device, apply a little pressure, this better work. And when you hear that noise, you gently pull it up, and out comes your cork. Voila. And then you just press the upper button, and you dispose of your cork. So now, we can enjoy a full glass of wine. And on that note, cheers and welcome to our Christmas shopping version. So, that's toy number two. So the next toy, or equipment, as we'll call them, is another corkscrew. And this corkscrew is a manual one. This is called the waiter's corkscrew. And the waiter's corkscrew is one that you can use if you really don't want to go with that electronic version and you're a purist. I'll use this one, whichever one, whichever one I have to walk the least distance for is the one I use. So this one has a little sharp blade on it, as you can see right there. It allows you to take off the cork. And by the way, if you buy twist-offs, this stuff is irrelevant. But I don't buy all twist-off wines, and you don't use these for twist-offs, since your wrist is the only tool you need. So for this bottle of wine, you simply, like a traditional corkscrew, bury it in the cork, start your turns, about one, two, three, four, bury the cork about halfway in, and then there's a little lever on here that you just, it starts to gently, you can see it, pull the cork out, and then you come up there, love that sound. Pop it out, manually take it off, and voila, you're done. I got this one at the Culinary Institute of America in California about 10 years ago. So this is something that's always in my drawer. <laughs> True confession, I put one of these in my travel bag when I travel so that I have a nice corkscrew available to me when I need to open a bottle of wine that is corked, that has a cork in it. We don't want to open a cork bottle of wine. That's a whole different conversation. So now, that moves us in to the next toy. And the next toy that you might want to consider buying for a friend is a funnel. You go, well, what's the big deal with a funnel? You just pour it in the bottle. Well, this funnel serves two purposes. If you can't see it, at the bottom of the funnel, there's perforated holes in this stainless steel. It's very nice. I've had this for years. And then there's a cup here that has a screen in it that helps you pull out the sediment, especially for red wines. And you take this, in order to get your wine aeration started, and as you can see there, you pour it in to our lovely decanter. You can see it kind of coming out in the fountain effect. Maybe you can't, but it's shooting out in little fountains all around those holes that are drilled into the bottom of the spout. And when that's done, you set your bottle aside. Kind of dab it off there, and you can just set that aside, and you're halfway on to your wine aeration. So let me set that bottle aside and let's pour a glass of our red. And voila, there you go. Let's sample this one. I have to keep my whistle wet, come on. Mm, that's a lovely wine. It needs a little more air, but by the time this presentation is over, it will have the air that it needs. Now, so there are our first two toys, our Coravin, or three, our handmade, or hand use manual corkscrew, and our wine funnel slash area. Now, let's go to the toy that I really like, that I got as a gift myself, and that is from a company called Brewmate. They make all kinds of these that are meant for the, the hot or the cold weather. If it, you want it to stay hot, these keep it hot. If you want it to stay cold, these keep it cold. It's Brew, B-R-U-M-A-T-E. They make shakers and everything. Um, next week, I'll come back to you with a segment on spirits paraphernalia. We'll talk about that more at the end. So let's stick now to this Brewmate. This is meant for us in this household more for the summer. 
but let me demonstrate for you how you would use it. Now this would be pre-chilled. It doesn't have to be, but you would, it's got a little, nice little sealable lid on it so it doesn't leak. You take your aerator, put it in the bottle so as not to lose any, and I'm using a white wine here. I'm just going to pour some of it, then I'll pour the whole thing. So that's about half full now. Presumably it would be cold. And then you would, we'll set this funnel back aside. You would bring it out to the beach or the pool or wherever it is you want. Nothing like it. And then you take your roommate glass, which is a matching color, matchy, matchy. So you then screw off the top of that, and I'll talk about that in a moment. You take your chilled wine, pour it into your glass, seal that back up. You put your little uh, glass top on here, which is rather elaborate, and you seal it down. It's spill-proof now. If you knock it over on the beach or if you're at the pool and it kind of drops out of your hand, no problem. It's got a real tight seal on it. Keep it tight. You press the seal, pop it open, pop that open, and off you go. <laughs> True confession, it's not my ideal glass, but when I'm at the pool or I'm at the beach, I'm not worried about sticking my nose like you normally would to get the aroma in a wine glass. I just want something to sip and I want it to stay cold. So this is another gift idea called Brewmate that you can get, and you don't have to drink wine out of these. You can drink whatever liquid you want out of them. We just happen to use them for wine. So let's set our brew made aside and move on to um, some other things that um, you could buy. I don't have them on demonstration here, uh, but some of the things that you could buy that I'll put in the area of wine equipment. If you have a budding wino, <laughs> as I was at one point, you can buy them a wine rack. If they're starting to have wine that's in their uh, pantry and over here and over there and everywhere, and they don't have a place to store it, you can buy them a nice little wine rack. You can get wine racks in 12, 6, 200. My wine racks have many bottles on it. If you remember before we moved into the, to the new art cellar here, I used to have the wine racks behind me and uh, they're full. They're still full. I'm not advocating that, but if you want to just get an accent piece for someone, wine racks are a good idea. Just Google wine racks on the internet. Uh, I don't have a specific recommendation for you. You can get them in wood. You can get them in metal. You can get types that you can hang on the wall. You put your wine on the wall. I don't really recommend those because wine bottles are extremely heavy. Um, so you might want to keep them on the floor or on a, on a nice little rack. Um, so that's another option that you have for buying your wine friends some excellent and heartfelt wine gifts for the season. Um, you could also go for a small wine fridge if you want to uh, amp up your game a little bit. Uh, small wine fridge, six bottles, 12 bottles. I happen to have one about through the side here. You can't really see it, but it's over here to my left. Uh, this one's holding about 50 bottles. I've had that one for a number of years. You can see the wine rack that I have back here that I'm always kind of shielding. This is called a cube wine rack. You can put six bottles here, six in each slot. And this little cube, which you can set on your floor and stain, you can buy them in natural wood, holds 24 bottles. So you get a couple of those, and you don't take up a lot of space, and you have the ability to showcase your wine and keep it safe and on its side. Because it is best to store your wine with the wine hitting the cork, because believe it or not, oxygen does find its way into your bottle, and it will not keep as long um, if you don't do that. Trust me, I know, I've lost a number of bottles of wines that way for no other reason than uh, the corks begin to shrink if you do not keep them moist. So uh, those are some of the uh, things that I would recommend for you to get for your friends, for your family, and also, as I said in the beginning, for you as well, if you're looking for gifts for wine. So that takes care of the wine equipment. Uh, let me go into the next category of uh, wine stuff that you could potentially buy for friends and family. And that comes down to glassware. I love glasses, and it's very important to me uh, the kind of glass that I have. 
So I've assembled a couple glasses here for you and also my one decanter to show you some of the different styles of glass that you can buy. My point is, is to just point out that there are a number of good wine glass makers that I would recommend and then you can go from there. The first one is Riedel, R-E-I-D-E-L. They're a little bit expensive, but not they're not going to break the bank. There's also a German company called Schwatt Weisel, and there's also an Italian company called Luigi Bormioli. And they're all about the same price. Well, Riedel's can get a little bit more expensive. Schwatt Weisel's can get expensive. And depending on the decanter you want, you can literally spend from $10 at Home Goods to $1,000 uh, at Macy's or some hoity-toity store. So um, I would definitely recommend that if you have a serious wine friend and you're in a good relationship with them, that glassware uh, may be an option for you to make their holiday a little bit more pleasant. Let me take another sip to keep that throat lubricated. And finally, you always want to look, you can always look for a medium price decanter. I would recommend one that's shaped like this with that little bump up in the glass. That's called a punt, like the football word, punt. I don't know the origin of it in wine terms, but it helps to aerate the wine and spread out the surface area. It's what I poured the red wine that I'm featuring here tonight uh, into. Decanters come in all shapes and sizes. I would recommend you can just pour your wine into a water pitcher, but I do recommend expanding the air surface. For your red wines no matter what price level in order to allow the oxygen to interact with the wine nine times out of ten you're going to drink it all pretty quick anyway but believe me that little 15 minutes of air can make the difference between a wine that's bitter and a wine that smooths out in a hurry so it's not only a gift it's a very uh, useful tool to help your wine experience be that much better so um, and before I leave, if you want to get real fancy, like my son and his girlfriend did for me last year, you can go get somebody some specialty glasses. This glass, as you know, I see it's on the table every time I'm talking about wine, at least. Doc G's Wine and Spirits is etched onto this glass. And I can tell you that this glass, as I read the bottom, you can always look on the bottom of the label. This is a Luigi Bormioli glass. I would love this glass if it didn't have Doc G's Wine and Spirits etched on it because it has a beautiful bowl it's a beautiful shape it's good for white wine it's good for red wine and guess what i'll throw a gin and tonic in this glass in a heartbeat so cheers to glassware so that takes care of glass takes care of um, all of the different um, toys as i was calling them that you can, uh, isn't that a nice sound for wine toys for adults? That sound, that something just sounds really good about that. So um, I do want to talk about something beyond um, things that you can put your hands on. And that is um, something called wine subscriptions. I subscribe to uh, Wine Enthusiast magazine. And I also had had a subscription to Wine Spectator magazine. Uh, I, I got the Wine Spectator magazine as a gift. I suspended that because it has more about European wines. Wine Enthusiast covers the world, and I've been a subscriber to Wine Enthusiast for years. So getting your, um, your intended person a gift for, with wine, a wine subscription, a wine magazine subscription is an excellent uh, gift, very inexpensive and one that uh, will last throughout the year after uh, you give that uh, subscription. So I would highly recommend, I would recommend Wine Enthusiast. We additionally have a subscription to Food and Wine Magazine. The focus more is there on food and wine pairings. Excellent magazine, excellent wines, even better food. So you can go whichever route you want with that, um, especially if you're a foodie and you're really into pairing food and wine, that's probably better than Wine Enthusiast. Although, Wine Enthusiast does feature some really nice recipes uh, on a monthly basis. So to close out um, our segment, 
I'm going to come back to a topic that I talked to you about. I don't remember when, but it is the topic of wine reading. And if you want to get somebody who is really an intellectual type, likes to read, doesn't really like to read from the internet, likes a book on their lap, this one book, Wine Folly, I don't remember what edition it's in. Um, I'm not going to move it here. I'm feeling lazy. But if you just Google winefolly.com, you'll be able to get the book. Um, it is um, The Essential Guide to Wines. I, have, I must have 20 wine books. I have a book this thick that I could use as a brick, as a stone, that has pictures of grapes. Every grape known to man with their etymological history. <laughs> That's probably not for you. It's not always for me. I'm just fascinated by the science of grapes as well. If you're not, this book will do you just fine. It talks about wine grapes, different food pairings, quantities, etc., etc., etc. It is a generalist's approach to looking at wine grapes. Because to me, as I've said to you so many times before, it's not just about the alcohol in the wine. There is a whole plethora of reasons that I enjoy the complete wine experience. So um, get this book. You can look for others. Um, there are, if you go to a, a Barnes & Noble and go to the wine section, you'll find tons of books. that uh, I'm sure you're going to find wine folly. And um, they will be worth your time to give to someone, and I'm sure it will be heartfelt, and they will appreciate the book. If they're just a beginner, it's really not time yet. But you know the level of your friends. If you know your friends and family well enough, this might be an excellent gift suggestion. So, um, as I said to you, on our next segment, I'm going to move into doing this very same format However, there will be no wine on the table. It will all be about spirits and things that go along with the drinking of spirits. The table may look the same in some ways, but in other ways, it will look different. So, um, before we leave, though, I do want to point out um, two more things. I couldn't do a spot without sharing some wine suggestions. So I have two wines from the same region, and there's a reason for that. One, they're both from Bordeaux. And the reason for that is, is when you want to buy people wine for the holiday, you want to try to find a sweet spot. And I believe that these Bordeaux find a sweet spot in two ways. One, in the price point, and two, in the fact that they represent a couple different grapes. So let's start with the white. In the glass here, this is a wine that I, you won't find this one unless you shop at Moore Brothers in Delaware, but if you just look for an inexpensive white Bordeaux, it's probably going to have Sauvignon Blanc and a little bit of Semillon in it, and that's what this one does. This one's called Chateau Turco 2020. It's from Bordeaux, and it is very aromatic, perfect party wine for sipping but it would also pair with food. And on the red side, I have a saint Brice saint Emilion. And the reason I like Bordeaux is because they're blends. This one allows you to put in the glass Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc. And I can tell you, remember I said earlier, let's let this aerate. Mm. You could just, these are party sippers, or you can pair them with a meal. It doesn't matter. And the best thing about these is somewhere around the $20 price point, you should be able to find one or the other. Red Bordeaux, white Bordeaux, go Bordeaux. So before I leave, there's one special guest I want to introduce on the table, and that's Wine Santa here. So for those of you that are into collectibles, this Wine Santa is, if you recognize it, a buyer's caroler, caroler <laughs> too much wine, a buyer's caroler doll. They're sold in Pennsylvania over near Doylestown in the town called Chalfont, buyerschoice.com. And they make all, we have so many of these, they're, they're, they come out for Christmas, 
We have them for Halloween. They have all different themes. This is the Wine Santa. I don't remember when we bought Wine Santa. I'm sure there's still a version of Wine Santa, but they do change them up from year to year. So if you really want to buy something special for somebody who you know is a wine drinker and is into collectibles, <laughs> because wines are collectibles too, let's be clear. But if you want to get them collectible something that's not alcohol and won't vanish, these are an excellent choice. So there is a sixth or seventh recommendation for you. So on that note, before I put you all to sleep, we'll see you next time for our segment on what you should buy your friends for Christmas if spirits is their go-to. So until then, cheers and stay healthy.